Welcome. Today we're going to go over the Obsidian plugins that I actually use because I show off a ton. But I got to be honest, I do not stick with everything that I show off. So, we'll see the things I stuck with today. Before we do that, a few ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member at curtismichael.ca slash membership. Number two, take a course at curtismichael.ca slash education. If you're already a Skillshare member, then you can find links to my courses on Skillshare below. Buckle up. Let's look at the plugins I use. First off is the book search plugins. Let's lets me do stuff like... Let's say this book, The Origins of Totalitarianism. Let's enter that in right now, and you can see what it lets me do. I'm going to hit Command-P, and I'm going to type book, and create new book note. I have two options here. I can enter in the ISBN, or I can enter in the title. I'm going to enter in the title, The Origins of Ism Search. And I can add it right there. As by Hannah Arendt. Yep. It's the correct one. So now I have it, and I can come in here, and it's unread still, actually, but it is owned, and it is in soft cover. So now this book is actually part of my library, and what I use this for is actually going to come up with the next couple plugins. So a tracker and data view. So let me go to my dashboard. So tracker and data view let me do stuff like this. So now I can look at um, the books that I'm actually reading, right? One is Creating Innovators by Tony Wagner, and one is Truth Decay by Kavanaugh Michael D. Rich. It also lets me do stuff that's actually data view. And this is tracker right here. It lets me say, I've read two books in 2023. I've read two books in 20, or 84 books in uh, 2022 via queries like this, right? Tracker, I'm doing a search type, I'm searching for the front matter, which you saw me kind of fill out for the origins of totalitarianism. The search target is date finished, and the red status is red, so those are two YAML parameters. Um, and the target date is between, uh, the start date is between um, 2023-0101 and 2023-1231, so this year. And then I summarize it with a number that lets me track here what I've done. Now, I used to do this in Goodreads. I used to do this in, uh, what was the other one? Um, the story graph. Goodreads, not so hot on the story graph. I think it's a great one. If you prefer to have an online tracking where you can interact with other people, the story graph is the one I would recommend. It is a small uh, team owned uh, not by a big organization that's just monetizing all your data all the time. So I'd recommend that. But I want to track it on my own just for me. Uh, and anything I share out online is where you get to see kind of what I've read or what I have pulled together from everything I've read. But tracker and data view let me parse this data. I'm actually going to work because Tracker lets me do graphs and a bunch of other stuff, and I need to get back and work on that so I can have like a year-end report, and that would be cool to have, but I don't have it yet. And book search is what lets me search books to add them quickly uh, into my notes so that I can then have the YAML, have the matter, front matter, so that I can dive into the books later. And then final in my setup is the Readwise official plugin. So there's links to all these plugins uh, in the description or in the blog post that goes with this. So Readwise lets me do stuff like was the one truth decay so i should be able to search truth decay and it's in only in writing books right now so it hasn't actually synced with readwise so this is the one note i would put for this and i actually probably need to come in here and go to readwise readwise official initiate sync should be syncing every 24 hours i do find every once in a while you need to come in and kind of give it a kick to say hey you need to sync my stuff so it's now run sync so now I should be able to go uh, truth decay. And I still only see it in writing in books. That means I actually need to dig into it. So what's the other one I just read? I just read um, anti-net net Zettelcast. And see, I have two entries, Readwise Books and Writing Books. So Readwise Books is the actual highlights from Kindle. That's what I was trying to show you. Readwise actually syncs these things to my devices or to Obsidian for me so that I can come through and see it. Now, it is important to note that simply um, highlighting and then having your Kindle notes sync to your database, not processing the book, not really creating knowledge. It's that second note, right? If I open up uh, Antinet, Settlecast, and I look at my writing folder where I've actually done some writing about it. I've done some thinking about it. Now, not all of them uh, come directly to like a big note like this. Um, some of them will turn into uh, you know, other things. So it'll turn into like more atomic notes. But this one, uh, Scott's anti the book, I just did. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Way too like all over the place with his content. He's got some good points, but the writing is poor. 
So that's where I keep two notes and I use Readwise Official to sync my Kindle stuff. Now I actually prefer um, reading paperback or reading a hardcover book. So I do that uh, regularly. Every morning I try to read and I have a notebook that I actually write my notes in first and then I would transfer them over to Obsidian. And you may ask, why do I even read Kindle if I prefer to read, you know, paper books? But um, I can't always do that, right? If I'm out with the kids, I was out away two weekends ago with the kids for the whole weekend. And the Kindle was just easier to pull out, you know, when we were waiting for stuff at the ice rink and no one I knew was skating and I could pull out my book and I could read for 20 minutes. And I could highlight it and know that they'd be synced later. Or at night when I don't want to, you know, I'm in bed and I'm reading Truth Decay is what I'm reading it right now, which is a report on how truth is decaying specifically in the U.S. and all the environmental factors, the world factors that have come to that. So what I am doing there is just highlighting a bit at night when I read for 20 minutes or so at night before bed, and then these sync back to my device. Although clearly I need to get that working because it wasn't working at this moment. Um, and then once I've done that, then I can actually come in and take notes on it later and turn it into, again, real knowledge in my uh, Obsidian Vault. Next up is the Kanban plugin. So what we're looking at is literally right here, the Obsidian plugins that stuck. So I've actually opened up on my second screen off to the side here, the notes for this, um, for me to really see it. But this is kind of how I work on things, right? So here's the things I'm working on. Actually, and this is way too much. I'm not working on that. Uh, I'm not working on that, right? There's a bunch of things I'm not actually working on. Not working on that right now. Uh, probably not working on that either. This lets me kind of work through what I'm really working on. Uh, so something I am working on is the things that OmniFocus gets right in the Bullet Journal V2. This is their second version of their hardcover notebook. So I'm working on these notes right here, and this is the one that I'm actually working on right now because I'm recording it as we talk. So I use that to organize the writing ideas that I have. I also use it for a paid newsletter. Uh, this is for the members. And so uh, as I come up with ideas, they go in here, and I'll work them across, right? So some of them, so we do not care about our children. It's actually a bigger project. It will probably get its own Kanban board as well because I think that's going to turn into a book. Right now, this is just kind of a holding note for all the research. It started off as a member's post, but I got to read all this stuff, <laughs> right? Uh, and the whole idea behind that hopeful book is that we pay teachers more um, if they truly educated our most precious resources. Uh, we'd give them time to mark and stuff like that. So we say we care about the kids, but we don't actually care about the kids. So writing projects or courses actually get more... Uh, things to themselves so they get their own Kanban board right so there's another one with the uh, reminders right get the most out of reminders you can see I had a whole right here this is all my reminders course and so it started off as just kind of lessons it starts off as ideas and once I kind of figure out the structure of them then I you know name them properly organize them and start working them through the process next up shortcut launcher so shortcut launcher allows me to launch shortcuts so let me look at this uh, and plugins I actually use. So what this lets me do is now that I've highlighted that, I clearly need to finish off the end of this <laughs> for the written version of this, hit Command P and I type Ulysses. And this is going to run my Ulysses shortcut, which takes this markdown, turns it over into something Ulysses knows what to do with. And then I can publish it from there to my site. Now, I also have used this for OmniFocus templates, for other stuff like that. This can be a super useful tool to take um, any of your OmniFocus or your Obsidian data and put it into any other application that is supported by shortcuts. Templator. Templator is pretty easy if you want it to be. So I'm going to start by going Templator uh, PKM January 2023, which is January 29th. So let's issue this one. So I'm going to create a new version of this. And it is 55, and it will be February 5th. I only know that because my birthday is the day before. Open it up, and I'm going to invoke Templator, and I'm going to type PKM. And I have my template out here. So Templator actually lets you do way more if we dig into it. Oh, that's actually just the template, so let's go to Templator. There's way more, right? There's more settings in here. There is more, like, fill-in fields. There's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do with it. But what I use it for is just basic templates. I know you'll see lots of people out there showing you like huge epic templates and customization and all this like autofill stuff. And that's great if it works for you, but do not look at your own basic templates and say, hey, I'm behind, I'm not doing enough, I need to automate more. I don't automate any more than what you saw here. That's it. I have some templates for basic stuff and that's it. I don't have any huge autofill things or anything like that. I just get content in here and then I type in what I need to do. So don't feel like you need to automate it and do all this fancy stuff. Templator just pre-fills things so that you have it. I use it at work too to make sure we're talking about the right stuff in GitHub issues. 
to make sure that we are getting all the right information and issues, other things like that, so that we just have a default content so that we know it's there. Next up, paste URL into selection. So let's actually do this by working on my um, newsletter quickly. So I saw my daily note template in Obsidian. So here it is. This is by Sebastian Dubois, talks about his daily note template. So I'm going to copy that out. Shift Command C is what I use on ReadKit. I have a video up last week about the uh, the tools that I use. And I would come in here and type uh, Bastian shared his, what was it, his daily note, right? Note template Obsidian. So what this lets me do is if I highlight this, and let's just go daily note template and paste. Normally if I paste it, it would actually just cover up and like delete all this word here and I just have a link. What this let me do is it actually fills in, puts in the markdown properly if it detects a URL on the clipboard and then gives me the full link. Saves me tons of time and then I will put this as a medium article because that's where Sebastian writes. So I will also check to make sure his name is spelled right. Sebastian E, so I did not spell it right. E and then the only hard part here is copying out his first name, which I will do off screen to get the uh, accent proper so that I you know, do his name properly. Paste your own selection, excellent app or excellent plugin, just an easy one to add for you. Next up is copy HTML. So what does that do? If I oh, select, type copy HTML, copy as HTML. Let's open up boob to have a spot to put this. It's literally just going to copy it as HTML. That's all it does. I actually do not use this as a regular tool in my Obsidian Vault for me, but I do use this at work like a couple times a week because our CMS needs, uh, it doesn't need HTML format, but if I have it all in Markdown, I can already have all my formatting done as opposed to pasting it as plain text and having to do all my formatting again. Copies HTML, excellent plugin that just lets, does one thing well. And I love those type of plugins. Next up, footnote shortcut. So let me do this here. Let's just... This is some text with a footnote. So now I'm going to type this as shift command six because that's mine and you can see it created a footnote for me. This is the footnote for the note. That's all it does, it creates an easy footnote for you. So anywhere in your document, if you hit this, it'll create the next possible uh, footnote mark for you. It puts in all the proper markdown, right? Because you actually need square brackets and carrots and all that stuff. So I use this all the time simply because it streamlines my footnote making. Love it. Finally, typewriter scroll. So we can show this by bringing it right over here. Where do I want to take Obsidian in 2023? So let's make a couple points and I'll fill this in later and then we'll talk about it together. I want to write a book. Search on stuff outside PKM space. Oh, that's about it. Those are the big things that I want to do. I just feel like I'm mostly talking about PKM. Going deeper into my notes. So what does typewriter scroll do? It, you kind of saw it happen. It was very subtle in this case. It just keeps my cursor in the center. So wherever I am typing, if I started to type up here, right? If I said, hey, let's type here, see it jumped right to the middle for me. That's all typewriter scroll does is it keeps your cursor in the middle of your screen when you're writing so that you can have that content right there for you. Now, as I said, where do I want to take Obsidian in 2023? I will fill this in. So if you want to read the whole version of it, because you don't like hearing me talk anymore, by all means, go to the blog post that is going with this on my site at curtismichael.ca. So one of the big things that I want to do with my Obsidian Vault in 2023 is just focus more on the research uh, aspect of it, because I would like to write that book that I talked about called, you know, we don't actually care about the kids. It's a common trope to throw out where we say, hey, we care about the kids. We've got to do this for the kids. The kids are so, we don't actually care about them, because if we did, we do stuff like support parents better. We would, you know, make sure that schools were funded properly so that teachers had more time to do their stuff. We would design our cities differently so that kids were safe. So I want to do more on that work, right? And I'm trying to do gear more of my reading towards that, more of my research notes, some for members on Saturdays towards that. And so that's what I want to do more. I want to spend more time in my vault doing those things as opposed to just, you know, coming up with uh, you know, the YouTube videos or the PKM newsletter, stuff like that, to actually use it, not just be someone who talks about using it. And really all I'm doing is like, I don't know, trying to get you to buy courses, trying to get you to watch more videos. I would actually like to be using it more and then I can show you what I'm actually using it for. I've always done best in that when I've done any type of video stuff, programming, anything 
showing you what I'm actually learning, what I'm actually using, what I'm actually doing, as opposed to making crap up because it fits the YouTube algorithm. Because I hate that. I don't watch that content. It's boring. I don't want to do it. And that's it. If you like the video, thumbs up below, subscribe, bell, all that junk you're supposed to be able to do. Uh, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Go read a book. That's probably a better use of your time, in fact. Have a good day.